For Action News, I'm Anna Samofska. Just when you thought science couldn't get any junkier, this just in. A group of researchers from the University of Chicago are taking twisted logic to a whole different level, claiming there is a strong link between autism and environmental toxins. In short, they claim autism rates are correlated with male genital malformations at birth, and they attempt to link those malformations with pollution. Therefore, they say pollution and chemicals are strongly linked to autism. We would call this circular reasoning, except we'd have to imply that there was any factual evidence here. We spoke to Aksha Friend and founder of the popular science site Science 2.0, Hank Campbell, who's no stranger to junk science himself. He explains how the group uses what's called a surrogate marker to correlate the two factors. What they were doing in this study was because there's no direct environmental evidence, they picked a surrogate market and they picked, I would think kind of a strange one because they, they picked a genetic malformation that they found in insurance claims. This makes no sense at all to scientists who are doing things out there, but they pick a surrogate marker because if they don't have any direct evidence and they don't have any environmental evidence, they look look for things that can imply correlation and causation. In this case, it was both autism and a genetic malformation, and then they were able to link it to pesticides and regulation. It, 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 It was really kind of a tragic mishmash of everything that you want to do wrong. Textbooks should teach how not to do a study, uh, but it's an open access publication. So they, they do editorial review, not, not peer review the way we think of it. And that probably helped us slide through into getting published. When you find a 200 plus uh, percent increase, and then you find a 90 some percent increase, and then you correlate that all to state regulations requiring a specific clinical diagnosis of autism. And then your surrogate market for that is these genetic uh, malformations that it's baffling. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's baffling why they chose to do it the way they do it. Uh, I could do the same County survey and I could correlate autism to having a whole foods in your County versus a cracker barrel. I mean, there, there is really, you could just pick almost anything and find two curves going up the way they did it and get the exact same result. Of course, we all know correlation doesn't equal causation, but that doesn't stop the media from spreading the story. Here's Aksha's Dr. Josh Bloom with more. Nobody knows what causes autism. So uh, it really makes it an easy target to assign blame to something that is unpopular uh, in the press or uh, a particularly uh, trendy, bad item, whether it's chemicals or vaccines or whatever. And uh, you can get a lot of good scare coverage out of this by making these really unsupported statements. This is really scraping the bottom of the barrel. And and, uh, unfortunately, the press picked up on it and people are going to think, oh my God, we got all these chemicals and they're giving everybody autism. And it's, it's laughable. Uh, to make that conclusion uh, based on what this uh, study says. And to read more on this story, you can head to our website, aksha.org. That's A-C-S-H dot org. While you're there, don't forget to also sign up for your daily dose of news delivered right to your inbox. For Aksha, I'm Anna Samofska.